why you should be making your signs, the pros and the cons. Um, I'm going to go over my little list here that I have. I've made some pros and some cons. As you can see, my con list is very small. I'll start with the cons first. The bad, the downside of making your signs. Cost is one thing. Startup cost. It can cost anywhere from you know the machinery and everything get you going. You know, it depends on how much you want to really get into it. It can you can get into it anywhere from ten, twenty thousand dollars to start up, uh, which is not bad when you consider uh, saving somebody's life or something. And then another con is definitely other departments they're going to want stuff now they're going to want signs i had these offices they want signs you know no smoking follow this sign pay here pay you, you can't put up little tiny traffic signs because that's what i make is traffic signs you don't want to put up little tiny traffic signs in the office so instead of sucking my budget dry take your budget to another sign shop and get it done i, yeah, I realize we all work for the same industry the same company and or same county and everything but you know what i refer to them as leeches because they want something for nothing they, they want it for nothing and that you know so anyways it's, it's just not a good thing don't let your people con you into doing something for nothing they can use their own budget to, to get it you, you make traffic signs you're dealing with public safety then they're taking away from your job anyways i'll get into some of the pros public safety very safe to make your own signs because now for one thing they're made exactly like they should be um and you don't have a sign knocked down that's going to take weeks to put back up. Uh, you know, here in the, the Napa Valley, we got a lot of tourists in here, so they don't always know all the road conditions, you know, where this turn's coming up, that turn. So, you know, when you have a curve warning sign down, you need to get it up. My response time is very quick. Uh, if I'm in the shop by, t by chance, well, I spend some time in the shop, you know, making signs and stuff, I get a call. I can be out and respond to a down sign in, in no time. I'm going to show you the video on how I respond to those um, quick signs that I need to make. Um, your lack of a huge inventory is a big, big, big pro. You don't have to have the, all these inventories, all these signs. It's like, oh, you, you know, your curve warning signs, your intersection signs, this and this and this, speed limits, stop signs and all this. You can make them. And I have a few on hand on some of the very, um, you know, like stop signs. Always have, I always have a dozen stop signs. Every time I get below a dozen stop signs, I start to panic and, you know, I need more and more and more and more. Um, so lack of a huge inventory. Uh, another thing is now you're not going to have to have POs made. POs are a pain in the butt. PO is a purchase order. I'm sure a lot of counties and cities do deal with those. Anytime we buy anything over $1,000, I have to buy POs, which... You, know, you have to take all the time for the office and staff and all this too. So I try to buy a huge order at the beginning of the year and maybe it'll carry me through the end of the year. So I'm not always having to buy this, buy that, buy that, buy that. We don't usually buy as I need. We buy it in a little bit larger quantities, get a little bit better break. And we just anticipate what we're going to be doing. Okay, then I have less people. I don't have to deal with a purchaser and all that. It, it's, it cuts down on the office work, not having to process invoices every time I turn around and buy something. Um, okay, I'm ready for emergencies. We've had earthquakes, we've had fires, we've had floods, two floods. The day we had an earthquake, that day I was making in the sign shop, making signs for earthquakes. Okay. Floods and fires, your, your, your suppliers are going to be inundated. It's going to take time, uh, you know, at best a couple, two, three days. And then what do, you, what do you do in the meantime? Get a piece of plywood and paint a sign, which just doesn't look good. So... I'm ready for an emergencies. Check out some of my other videos to be prepared for emergencies. I also have emergency generator and emergency um, air compressor ready to go, ready to go. Okay. Um, another thing is the cost. It's a lot cheaper to make your own signs. I use recycled blanks. I, I send them back to a manufacturing company called Zap. They refurnish it for me, refurbish it, send it back. So. There might be some areas in the United States, you know, so I imagine there are other companies that do it. They're not the old, they're not the only one. Um, so, you, you know, it, it's it's going to cost, you know, a substantial amount to get going and everything. But, you know, once you get going and you, you buy some sign blanks and stuff and, and just keep, you know, making what you need, you'd be surprised what you can do on how much cheaper it is. You can save big, big money. Anyways, um, that's probably a, a, the the biggest, hugest thing is the pros and the cons is there's hardly any cons, just nothing. There's no reason not to make your own signs. So if you're not making your own signs, you better start making your own signs because somebody's life's going to depend on it someday. Alrighty, let's jump into this video and I'm going to show you some examples on how I respond and can make my times and I'll come back with a little commentary at the end and we'll um, enjoy the video. All right, I'm going to show you some examples 
of how it's very effective to make your own signs. Um, if you're not, like I said, you should be. Suppose, for example, you want to go out and buy a sign, a 36 inch warning sign, you know, sheeted, everything with the emblem already on it that you need. It's probably going to run you, if you buy just one, it's probably going to buy, pay, you'll buy it and pay probably approximately with shipping and everything. I bet you for one sign, you'd be lucky to get that thing for slightly under $100. Okay. Um, so now you have so many signs. You have all your W1 series, W1, 1, uh, the two, the three, the four, the five. Okay, then you have the supplements that go below it. How fast you were going, you know, your W13 series. Was it 25 mile an hour curve, 30, 35 mile an hour? So you have so many variables. So this sign go gets damaged. You're gonna go to your inventory, your huge inventory that you have to carry, and you're gonna get this sign. You don't have this sign, you're gonna wait a week or so to get it um, fixed. So here's what I do. I already have the borders made up. They're a standard size border for a 36 inch warning sign. Okay, I have a 5 8 inch gap, and my border is my uh, 0.875, which is 7 8 inch. I have it already set up. I put a little cross check reference in here for the um, centers. I put a T and a B, that means that's the top, that's the bottom, and the holes will line up perfect on the back. You know, when you punch out for wind brace or whatever you have to do, however you want to secure it, you have three bolts down this way. And then you have a wind brace on the back. Somebody that knows, doesn't know what a wind brace I'm talking about, it's the little brace that goes on the back of the sign that, that holds it up so it doesn't flex so much. Okay, hypothetically, I get a call. Uh, hey, Bob, uh, got a call. Somebody hit a, a, warning, a curve warning sign. There's been several accidents in that area. I have to get up and replace that sign. So I'm going to go into my huge inventory. I don't have my huge inventory. What am I going to do? I'm going to probably take that mangled up sign if I can, bend it out, maybe put it on a barricade, put it up on a post temporarily. Or I can come into my shop, I can pull out my covered blank, I can come over to the many, um, here's a W21 to the left for a 36 inch sign that I happen to have cut out. If you have to cut out your own, if you don't have extras like I do ahead of time, yeah, what's it going to take you? Five, ten minutes to cut one out? Anyways, so what I do, then I have my book. I have this little book I made up. It's called my MUTC sign layouts. Every sign that I've ever made, I always make a photocopy of it and I have it in here. So it gives you all the specs on exactly where you're going to place this, this arrow on here. It's, in this corner might be so much down from the center line and over. So, you know, we're going to have our sign in. I have it already laid out. I come in my shop, I grab my thing, look at my book, put my design in, roll it through, I'm gone. That sign. Now I can go anywhere within the county within probably, oh, our, our county's not, you know, it's not a huge county. You know, some of you people might have huge counties, but literally I can make a sign, be anywhere in the county and be on site, on scene within an hour. If, I, if conditions are ideal, like if I'm in the shop, that's fine. But if I'm in another part of the county, I have to come back. So by the end of the business day, I should say, even if overtime's required, I have this sign up. My public is safe. And that's what it's all about. It's keeping our roads safe for our public. Okay, um, so same thing, like an intersection sign goes down. I, I just happen to have these already pre-marked. I know for ha laying these out for so many times, this is the center line and then it gets centered in the middle. So I have my lines already made up. So I bring out my thing, lay it in the center here, apply my transfer. Less than five minutes I've made that sign. Okay, same thing, um, you know, if I had a no outlet sign, if I want to make a no outlet, I have a lot of these already pre-cut up have the deer. A lot of controversy over this deer sign. <laughs> Believe it or not, yes, people do complain where you put the deer signs. They feel that uh, there's too many deer killed in that area and we should move the signs so the deer cross other places. That's not a joke. That's real. We actually have a couple of those calls logged here at the county and it's hilarious when they do call. Anyways, it's just to kind of let the people know that this could be a possible area for deer. That's a whole other story. 
But anyways, prime example of why you should make your own. So just think if you had to have these signs that are going to cost you, you know, if you buy a bulk of them, you might get them for $79 a piece with shipping and everything. You're into them for about $85. So my cost that I'm going to get into, and I'll, I'll tell you the cost here in a minute, but uh, crazy not to make your own sign. There is a definite pro to making your own signs. There is not one con into making your own signs when it comes to this. All right, more examples heading your way. All right, okay, now let's get into a little bit of cost of what it's gonna cost to make you this, okay, to make your signs. I buy a lot of my refurbished metal blanks from uh, Zap. What we do, you probably recognize this blank. This is an old railroad crossing sign. And we send it back to Zap, and they send it back to us. They have a water jet thing that cleans it off. It's really great. Uh, check it. There's a lot of companies throughout the United States that'll do this. It'll re refurbish your old metal, and it's like brand new condition. So a 30 by 30 that we get back from them, like that one would be, costs us $10.94. There's no way you're gonna buy that blank for $10.94. So there's one thing, there's a cost right there, and the price of aluminum fluctuates a lot. So if we do that, okay. So I buy my blanks back, I get my stop sign back. You can see an old sticker that used to be there. Refurbish mine, make them brand new. So now I have stop signs, I have, I carry and you should have stop signs in stock. So I carry a lot of extra stop signs. So an outside vendor would probably charge me $53 for that sign. Well, that's what I have from, uh, I have a list of some fire signs that got burned up in the 2017 fire and there was just, we were inundated. So we, we, we did send out and have a lot of these made. Um, then I, I installed them all. So the stop sign, th their cost, this was without shipping, and this was a, kind of a break they were giving the counties for um, some disaster because of the, the, the amount of devastation that we suffered in Napa and Sonoma counties uh, in the 2000 October 17 fires. Um, so they charged us $53.18 to make this stop sign. Okay, now you figure regular, um, price that you're going to pay, you know, it varies for whatever region you're in, but I could make that sign for $33.94. So you think, well, you know, you save 20 bucks. Yeah, I save $20. So every time I touch a sign, if I save $20, $20 is $20 and it adds up. Okay. The bike lane signs, same thing. You know, they're 24 by 18. Here's just the overlay that I have. We have the bike lanes. Then we have the bike route, which are, you know, green. So those are going to cost me, my final cost to make those are going to be $18.21. It's going to cost me $5 for the blank to have uh, $5.25. And then the materials is going to cost me $12.96. How I figure out my materials is I take my price of my vinyl. Uh, we haven't used diamond grade here at the county. And then I take the price of my um, black EC that I'm going to lay over it. So I break it down to the square inch, okay? So it costs me two cents a square inch to cover this sign. And then another, uh, I figure another square inch to, um, for the amount of EC that goes over it. But I do save a lot of EC film by not cutting out the whole thing and just cutting a little panel. So, you know, I don't factor in a lot of savings. So there is a little bit more savings behind the scenes there. So to produce that spike lane sign, it's going to cost the county $18.21. To have that gone out and made, it's going to be probably, you know, $25 to $35, depending on where you're in. So some, sometimes you can save, you know, 20 to 50% on a sign, okay? Um, another example, chevrons. Um, these are 24 by 30. And then we have the old, uh, don't tell me how fast to go sign, the speed limit sign, which nobody pays attention to, you know, 24 by 30s. So to produce that sign, I'm in it for about 30 bucks, okay? The blank is gonna cost 
$8.75 to have refurbished. We send back our old blanks to buy it. Again, I doubt if you can buy a blank like that for that price. So, you know, again, your price could change a little bit. Then $21.60 for the material. So for $30.35, if somebody hits this sign in a curve, there's a reason they hit the sign uh, other than just being stupid, not paying attention to their basic traffic laws. You want to get those signs replaced as soon as possible. Again, you don't want to send it out to a vendor and it's going to take time and everything. So for $30.35. And we get into the, um, you know, the curve warning signs. You usually have your supplement below the W13-1. This is 35. Um, you know, you get 35 for it. So if you have to buy these, you have to buy 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 30, all the multiples up to 55 to have on stock. Okay, by making my own, I can just change the numbers. Um, I have the borders already pre-made up on the sign, and I have a little um, little pattern that I put down here over the sign that tells me right where the uh, miles per hour go and where the 30 goes. So I cut these all out at once, and then I'll assemble them on the on my. Um, blank and I can cut out two of these sets of numbers at a time on the 36 inch vinyl so I don't waste any. So you know if I need a 35 I'll cut out a 35 and I have a bunch of these numbers on hand but I don't cover them with transfer tape. Try not to cover a lot of your images ahead of time I found out. Leave them blank until you need them because once you put the transfer tape on that transfer tape then is hard to, harder to get off. You can but it's, it's, it's harder so there's a little tip don't pre-cover them a lot like I did. But anyways, I have these ready to roll. Like I said, I can go ahead and I can make the sign be out and gone in 20 minutes from my shop on scene and the public is safe. That's what it's all about, safety for your public. There's another con right there to tell your, um, if you have to go to your board of supervisors, your boss, or whoever you have to sell this program to, public safety. You can't put a number on public safety. I would like to think that one time in my career here making signs just once maybe one of my signs saved somebody's life and to me it's worth it um, how do you put a value on somebody's life and I like to think that I saved somebody's life perhaps I did maybe two who knows maybe I saved a car load of kids or a bus load of kids or something anyways definite selling point because a huge lawsuit if you have what are you going to tell the attorneys in court, especially here in California where it's such a litigious state, um, everybody sues everybody for everything. So what are you going to tell the, the, the people in the court? Well, we wanted to save money, so we had to order that sign. So you, 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 that just doesn't fly. It doesn't work. So the 24 by 24 is 26 bucks. I'm in it for $17.28 in materials. My cost would probably be a little bit cheaper since I'm not cutting out the whole thing. I'm just piecing it in. Um, $8.75 to have the blank refurbished. You know, again, you might pay a couple dollars more to have a sign blank refurbished, but we um, we save all of our signs up for three months. They go back every three months and they get recycled. Um, so there's the 24 by 20 in the it. And we also make street name signs. So here's a 36 inch street sign. And we have the logo that's made uh, we don't have our own printer to print it. So I made $3.25 to have a logo made. Um, this is a 36 inch sign and it's double sided. So the blank that I use slightly a little bit thicker aluminum, I use 0.125 for the thickness so that they don't flex really bad in the wind. Anyways, I'm into this sign, <clears throat> $9.72 for the blank to have it refurbished. And the materials and everything, um, $19.44, but you got to include, it's a double-sided sign. So really, I don't have to buy another blank, it's just extra materials. So I'm into this sign here for about 25 bucks, okay? You go out and you try to get a custom-made sign, you're not going to pay $25. Um, you know, you get a street sign knocked down and you think, yeah, yeah, I'll get to it. People should know where they live. And people know, generally know where they live, their street name. Uh, their friends might have a little bit of a hard time finding it, but... What about the first responders? And you go, oh, well, they have GPS. They, 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 it just tells them where to go. We all have a GPS in our, our vehicles. A lot of us, a smartphone. It doesn't just tell you where to go. 
first you have to know how to get there. But when seconds count, and they have to rely on a GPS if they're at the same street, or if they can just see the street name sign, if that's your loved one and seconds count, you're going to be, um, you know, shaking your head. Why, 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 why can't they put up a street name sign? You know. So, anyways, I'm into those for $24. Um, a slightly bigger one. We use 36, 42, and then 48 inch blanks. Obviously, the the bigger your blank, the more the cost you're into. So, the larger ones, they're not that much more. Maybe five dollars more. Uh, 30 bucks or so I'm into the 48 inch ones. The 42 inch ones are in between about $27. And if you don't need two sides, like um, when I put up a um, sign that has a, um, you know, your 36 inch or 30, whatever you want to use, your, your intersection warning ahead sign, the yellow with the street name below so you know what's coming up. You know, you could be into it for you know, cheaper, less than $20 or whatever. So, you know, by the time you put up an intersection sign, uh, you know, for, uh, and these big 36 inch intersection signs, about 54 to $55 to make. I'm in it for about $38.88 on materials alone, and about $15.75 for a 36 by 36 inch sign blank. <laughs> I kind of feel like I'm trying to sell used cars here, but that's not the deal. Um, what I'd like to sell you on is making your own signs. The biggest con I would have to say is definitely public safety and the cost. Yeah, the biggest, uh, I, I should say the biggest con would be the price. The biggest pro would be obviously making your own, being able to react to any emergency. But the biggest con has to be your setup, okay? Uh, to buy a plotter, cutter, you're into that for probably Oh, fourteen thousand dollars or so, um, and then the software. Then there's a learning curve and everything. So you know, then you have your initial materials to buy and stuff. But nothing says you have to do it all at once. You know, you can gradually increase. So, anyways, I'll show, I'm going to show you some more examples on why to be, make your own signs. All right, uh, there's a few examples on why we should be making our own traffic signs. If you're not already making your own, you really need to do it. Uh, if you have any questions, concerns, comments, or anything, feel free to contact me. Uh, you can find me at uh, Bob the Sign Man on YouTube. Obviously, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can find me. Go ahead and click my About section right here, and you'll go down. I'll have my email address where you can email me. Um, you can find me on Facebook and Bob the Sign Man. I also have my own website. We'll go ahead and click it, and I'll show you what it'll bring you to. It'll bring you to Bob the Sign Man. I've got um, a lot of good uh, right here. If you click the More tab. Um, so really good traffic sign resources on where I buy a lot of my um, supplies and stuff and here's some more uh, related videos and stuff um, my home page down here or you can find me on Facebook Pinterest and YouTube you can contact me here's my address go ahead and stuff an envelope full of $20 bills I'd appreciate that um, well whatever I'll take fives and tens uh, here's my phone number uh, you can leave a voicemail uh, email me uh, kind of a cool little page to check out. Check out this little safety video. It's pretty pretty moving. It'll it'll get you. Um, you know, I have my Bob the Sign Man at home here on my Facebook page. Follow me here. Uh, Pinterest, you can find me under Bob Storide, S-T-O-R-E-I-D-E. -E. I have a board on Bob the Sign Man on here somewhere. Um, yeah, right here, Bob the Sign Man. I put a lot of good stuff on there. I, and then I'll show you this little carnage here that happened a, a little while ago. Um, another reason, big reason making your own traffic signs right here. Uh, you can see uh, I got a phone call. I was on a message seven o'clock in the morning. You know, CHP had called and already said, you know, a sign was down. Uh, obviously, very bad, critical condition. It's a terminal. This one didn't survive. So what we had to do is go out. We put a temporary barricade. The guys went out r really early in the morning, put a barricade on it, and then at seven o'clock when I came into work, uh, you know, said, hey, you got to stop sign down. So I had the stop sign, the street signs made by, and they they texted me this picture. I saved it for insurance purposes it texted me the picture so I, I responded to it put one up had it up by 10 o'clock you could you couldn't not do that if you didn't make your own signs you'd be having to wait for the street sign to come in so and this little iWorks program here is pretty cool it tracks a lot of stuff so as you can see um i, I the last accident happened um 42318 you know they they uh i think that was the last one there they ran a bunch of stuff over and stuff so i had to go fix it 
so, so what we do is we keep track of these and we bill their insurance company when they do stuff like that so we do recoup the cost by the time everything was all said and done it was three hundred eighty seven dollars so you know, it's not cheap to run a run a stop sign over and of course the poor guy got a DUI on top of it so you know, it's, we all make bad choices and that was definitely one of his so down here um, for the three accidents that I've replaced this thing so far over the years over the 15th and the 18th was a bad year uh, 2018 you can see within a month it was destroyed again uh, we, we've collected one thousand one hundred and four dollars on our um, on our debt that was owed to us for somebody running through the traffic signs so um, you know with this like I said with this kind of carnage there's just no way you if you're not making your own signs you can respond to something like this and it's just you know essential that you do that uh, like I said if you have any comments and concerns feel free to email me um, t I showed you some uh, areas where you can contact me uh, I, I don't mind it at all you know if you have some ideas you want to share some questions or concerns I'm getting a lot of phone calls I became pretty good friends with this guy and uh, well we're kind of like instant messenger friends we've never met in person he's from Canada Mike hey big shout out to Mike he's one of my fans um, I got various agencies that people have contacted me all over the United States. I had a guy from Massachusetts called Dearborn, uh, Dearborn, no, somewhere in, oh heck, Indiana, Illinois. I think Deerfield, so, Illinois. So you know, contact like me. I, I don't. I don't have a problem with it at all. Um, you know, maybe we can share some ideas, or I can help somebody out. Uh, we're, we're all this, in this for the same business. Uh, same thing. We all just want to protect our public and our safety of our, our, our motoring public, you know, to make it, uh, and you know, release some of the liability from the counties and stuff. Nobody wants to get sued or anything, you know, for not doing their job. You know, it's a, lawyers all of California, they, that's all they want to do. Um, anyways, as always, thanks for watching, and I hope this helps.